Hi everyone, welcome to our lecture today. So today we'll discuss about uh, Git and GitHub and we'll also have a midterm review. I wrote a review and it's available on Piazza. We'll discuss it in a few minutes. So let's start with uh, version control and Git and GitHub. So basically version control is the best way to develop a large project without losing anything that you developed uh, before or during this time. So the, the real point here is never lose your code again. So this happened to everyone. You have been working on a project for a long time, let's say in CSC 114, 214, 216 and other projects your computer died, you lost your code, or you made changes to something that was working and now it's not working anymore. You would want to see the previous version uh, so you can return to it. Or you want to combine your work with some other teammates work. Uh, in future semesters, CSC 316 will probably be a, a team a project. Currently it's not, but it could be a team's project and there are discussions to be such a case. So the solution for all of that is version control or other names for version control are revision control systems, source control or source code management. Now, basically what this means is that version control is the management of changes to documents, computer programs, large websites, or other collection of information. And you may have already all seen this kind of uh, document management systems. Even Word has track changes, basically a way that you can track all the changes. And since this is similar for source code management, only that for programming is even more important to have a complete history of all the changes that were made to the code uh, such that you can return back, you can merge with other codes and so on. So basically what version control is, is a system for managing changes to files, is used by individuals and teams to keep history of all the changes and share and distribute common source code. And you can see this in general websites for version control like GitHub. You basically have a way to track all of the changes and a way to share a, a distributed code between multiple developers and also distribute the code that is the most up to date. So basically the version that you would download or clone from the website you would get with all of the updates up to the current date and time. It's used in general for large product uh, development needs and it basically does all the following. It tracks changes to source, including the date and time that they were changed, the version number, developer name, comments, messages that were added, and you can query basically for such, uh, for such comments. If you want, let's say, all changes made to a certain file, you write a query and it will give you the versions for that file. Or all, ver all uh, changes made by some developer and you would get all of the changes made by that developer. Also, it offers the ability to revert changes. You basically can check out a different version of the system than the one that uh, you basically uh, have on your machine. It can be an earlier version in most cases. It also gives you the ability to mark all sources at a specific version to produce a release or a distribution. So let's say that all the changes have been made that were necessary for a certain requirement. You can create a distribution, uh, split a second branch for that specific distribution and freeze it in time. So now you can continue your changes to the main uh, uh, branch but uh, that one will only have updates like security updates, very important updates. There are many tools out there and actually this is a historical view of these tools. 
CVS used to be up to uh, 10 years ago, the main uh, version control system. Subversion was a newer one. It basically uh, was developed on Apache website and, and uh, had a lot of users. Uh, Git was a game changer, is a distributed version control system and allows basically multiple repositories. Even when you're cloning, you create a repository on your own machine. Uh, Microsoft uses Microsoft Studio Team Foundation Server and many other companies are basically in this space of version control. Version control system basic services are backup and restore of source code, synchronization of source code, short-term and long-term undo, track changes, track ownership of uh, repositories, sandboxing, branching, and merging. And I will go into details in every one of these basic actions. So backup and restore is basically the basic uh, uh, activity action on, of a virtual control system. Fail files will be saved and committed at versioning steps. So once you commit to the repository, a version ID is given to the current version of the file. One can jump at any moment in time, so the entire history is actually available. So you can jump to any version in the past, any version uh, after the current version up to today. Uh, like for instance, you need a file that was committed on, on August 23rd, 2020. No problem, you ask the version control system for it and you get that version of the file. Synchronization is basically the action that multiple developers can share files, work on the same file at the same time, see changes, the diff between them and other versions on the, on the version control system. This can stay up to date by pulling updates uh, with the latest version. Even when developers are working simultaneously on the same file, you can think about it uh, like Google Docs which allows you multiple users to work on the same file at the same time. You can make your changes, accept other people's changes, commit your changes, and everybody does it in the same way. Now, there are two different ways for version control systems to basically do undo and re retrieve an older version of the, of the code. And we'll talk about these differences in different types of version control systems. One way is that as long as you are editing a file, but you haven't added the file to the repository, uh, all that you need to do is to uh, throw away your changes and go back to the last known version, good version in the database. Long-term undo is what happens quite commonly when a bad mistake was made in the repository on some file. Let's suppose that you had a change a year ago on a project and it had a bug. And since then other files were modified in the repository and you want to jump back to that old version and see what change was made or even re uh, get that old version and continue with that version to work on it. So all the files are tracked and basically you leave messages explaining why the update was made. And we'll see in a small uh, uh, real example that you basically can create a repository. You can uh, uh, leave messages for every update. They are stored in a special log called the version control system log, not in the file itself. You can query that log and this makes it easier to see how the file is evolved over time and why. And developers should log every change. And basically when you have a change in the version control, you should uh, uh, say what have you done, not just committed with an empty message. And a VCS tag also changes, uh, also tracks the person that made the change and the email, the date and time of the change. And this help, helpful for finding the, uh, the person that modified uh, that file and made some mistakes. If you are making big changes, 
you basically need some kind of an insurance against yourself. You can make temporary changes in a separate isolated area, like for instance, your own uh, uh, version or your own branch. Uh, you can test and work out the kinks before checking in and merging, merging with the main branch. And that was the entire idea of version control systems that you can branch, create basically changes and you can basically merge them into the main branch once you know that your changes are correct. And this is the idea of branching and merging. You can branch the current version of the project and once you are satisfied, you can merge it back into the common area. Uh, some terms that you need to know, uh, remember about version control systems. Repository. Repository is the database storing the files. May also mean the repository server, like for instance, GitHub, the computer or the system that stores the repository. Client or Git client or SVN client is the computer that connects to the repository and retrieves the source code or pushes a new version of the source code. And this is the same idea when you have software you have a version control repository uh, server, like for instance, you are ho hosting your own Git server or GitLab server. And client is the software that you need to retrieve and push the changes to that server, like GitHub uh, desktop or smart, uh, smart Git or source tree. I will show you all of them. Uh, I use them in different projects. Uh, then you have the working set, the working copy, which is basically your current local directory of files where you make changes. The trunk and the main uh, is the primary location for the code on the, of the repository is usually uh, on the repository, on the server. So basically you have your own version, but then there is the trunk, the one that is the main version for everyone. And I We'll just put it here so it's right after the server. Uh, I will update the slides and send you the revisions later. Change log or history is the list of all the changes made to the files since it was created. Revision is the version number for the current for a file. Basically, you can see for every file and every change you can see a revision ID and every file has a revision ID. The head is the latest revision in the repository. The basic actions for any version control system are init, which initializes a new repository. If you want to place a project under version control, this would be the first command that you will need to learn. Checkout, uh, download the code from the repository for the first time is called checkout. Add put a file into the repository for the first time. Like for instance, when you want to begin to track it with version control, you would do git add, git is one of them, git add and the file name or git add period. And then it adds all of the, the files and folders under the current directory into the repository. Once you do that, actually the next command would be commit, in which case you would commit the code commit your changes to the local repository. And this is in the case of a distributed uh, version control system like GitHub or Git. Checking is updating or checking in the files to the, to the main repository if they have been changed and the uh, files get new revision numbers and the people can check out the latest uh, one, latest version. Uh, other basic operations, update, like pool in the case of uh, Git. Uh, you basically synchronize your files with the latest version from the repository, revert, throws away your local changes and reloads the version from the, the repository. Branch are, is a more advanced action, as I told you, branch and merge. Basically, branch creates a separate copy uh, for private use, like bug fixing, testing of your own code. 
uh, in this case, branch is both a verb and a noun. Basically, uh, what we say is branch the code and a noun would be like when, which branch is the one that basically has the latest changes or the changes for some update on health project. Diff uh, is the, the main command to find the differences between the current version of the file and the version on the server. So diff is a standard word for finding these differences, what lines have been added, deleted, and so on, updated. Merge is the opposite of branch. So basically is when you apply the changes from one branch to another one to bring it up to date. You can merge features from one branch into another. Conflict is when you have a diff and you have a conflict between uh, the, your version in your repository and somebody else's version, like the main repository. And you can't apply both changes because that file is in conflict. So it can be solved in multiple ways. You can resolve it by fixing uh, the changes that contradict each other and then checking in the most updated version. Locking. So actually there are two different types of repository systems. And we will talk about this. There are the centralized server-based repository control systems in which you have one main server that contains the, the, version, the main version of the code and you can lock certain files. So you, can, you are the only one that can work on them. And then you would have to break the lock in the case that uh, somebody locked the file but uh, you still want to up, make updates. Uh, you can release the lock if you are the one uh, holding the lock and so on. But the main, op the main distributed uh, the version control systems are the distributed versions. About 10 years ago, uh, Linus Tornwall basically created Git, which is an example of, and the main example of uh, distributed con version control systems. And the main idea of uh, Git is the fact that when you check out code from a main repository, you create a local repository. Basically, you are now your current version is also a repository to which you can commit without having to push to the remote repository. It allows many developers to work on a given project without requiring them to maintain a connection to a common network or to the internet. It also distributes, there can be multiple repositories on different uh, computers, which are different versions of the code. So it makes it uh, a little bit harder to merge such multiple repositories, but in the same time, it has much more advantages. There is a question in the chat. What's the difference between commit and push? You will see very, very soon. I have an example in, uh, in uh, uh, the code that I will show you. Commit is committing to the local repository. Pushing is to push to the remote repository. But let's talk also a little bit about the history. So in the initial uh, code version control system is, was basically RCS. And it's kind of like that as a standalone. Uh, CVS took over it, concurrent versioning system, but it also was replaced by Subversion, which is still alive, like uh, websites like SourceForge uh, is still using uh, SVN and older projects. It killed uh, C uh, CVS and is now basically killed by Git. Uh, there are other, basically every single company in the world has its own uh, repository uh, system. Like for instance, Microsoft has uh, the Microsoft uh, Visual Studio team uh, repository system. So let's talk about SVN. This is, I'm assuming that at some point you will probably use a little bit SVN. It was developed by Apache Software Foundation we, under Apache license. 
the idea is again having a main repository and everybody else is just a client and lots of websites are still using it like sourceforge apache software foundation freebsd and so on uh, the whole point is server client model you have a, a single server that is the main version and then multiple clients that are checking out and checking in updates to that main version and again, it has common operations like the ones that we talked before. Import is basically the first checkout, basically the art of copying a local tree that is not, it's not currently in a work, uh, working copy into the repository for the first time. Checkout is to create a local working copy from the repository. Uh, commit is to write and merge the changes made to the working uh, from the working copy to the repository all of these are done to one main repository so when we talk about repository we talk about the remote repository in the case of svm update merges changes made in that repository in the repository to the local copy merge is the operation of merging two sets of changes, the one on the local copy and the one on the uh, main copy in the repository. And similarly for branches, SVN still has branches. So how to run SVN? Usually you download SVN, uh, you can get it with apt-get if you are on Linux, and then you basically can commit files to the repository, update from the repository. Common clients for SVN are Tortos uh, SVN. Again, it's basically a Windows uh, integrated in the Windows uh, interface. You can click on a folder and you have all of the options uh, for Tortos SVN. There are also Git based uh, Tortos uh, Git, which basically allows you to do the same operations uh, like basically clicking right on a folder and setting uh, git uh, commands. Now let's talk about the main topic of our class today, which is distributed version control. And this means that there are multiple copies of the repositories. You can think about it as follows. There is one main branch, uh, one main repository, and then every time you check out, you are actually creating a repository on your machine and the checkout uh, is called a clone. So that way you have multiple repositories that are each working on some system. The common operations again are uh, uh, faster because you can do updates to your own local repositories and then just push to the server whenever you want. Uh, each peer acts as a remote backup of other repositories. So again, if the main repository crashes uh, and you can't retrieve it, you can basically just take one of the copies and make it the main repository. Uh, the drawbacks, the main drawback is that is a more complex merge operation and it's nowadays it's easily uh, automated, but it's quite difficult uh, to do it by hand. And the main system that we are using today for uh, repository control is Git. Uh, basically, it was released in 2005. The original author was Linus Stonewall. He also created Linux under GNU license, is used by the Linux kernel. You can download it as a main website from this website. Let me actually show it to you. So you can download the version for Windows or the version for Mac. What it downloads is basically a bash and a direct command git. So you can basically run git from your local directory like in CMD. You can push, you can pool and so on. Uh, then there are specific clients like source tree is the one that I personally like the most, but you don't have to, to use exactly source tree. So source tree is developed by uh, Atlassian. 
And it's a very good, easy to use uh, source depository system. So let me just show you a simple example. I'm using it for many, many years and uh, both my students and I are committing. This is a, a source tree repository. It's for a project, a research project that some of my students and me work on. In fact, one of the students in this class works on this project. I saw his name in the commits. And as you can see, there are branches and you can see what every update was uh, doing. There are also merges in the code from time to time. You can see when people modify and update the source code. I prefer merge because uh, source tree because it's easy to see a lot of things. You can basically see the files that were updated in every version of the code. And you can basically even retrieve those files and see what was changed and so on. Okay. So I personally like source tree, but there are many different repository control systems. GitHub is GitHub desktop is the tool that uh, comes with GitHub. So again, basically it's a client. Let me show this one too. So GitHub desktop for the same project that you saw before. It basically shows me all the changes that were made by uh, anyone. And again, you see the history, you see the files that were modified, you see the updates. So it's a quite useful version control system. Okay. You can work on different branches. It's very, very useful. Okay. Uh, Smart Git. So Smart Git is a professional uh, proprietary system. You can use it as a student for uh, the projects that you develop in, let's say, this class. Uh, but if you want to use it for uh, like basically uh, larger projects for companies, commercial projects, you it's only for purchase. I use, I use it in a company that uh, I work with. Git Kraken is basically the uh, equivalent of these version control systems for Linux. Uh, I only use it for Linux because all of the other version control systems are not available for Linux. Uh, basically, Git Kraken is my tool for, uh, for Linux. Uh, Git Fork is another version that is available for Mac OS. So Fork is basically the version that most uh, Mac developers use. It's again, all of them kind of have the same feeling, but you get used to one tool and you will probably use it for the rest of the time. I'm my personal favorite is source tree. Uh, GitHub used to be my personal favorite for GitHub projects, but uh, there were issues with uh, uh, losing the code or basically bugs that I didn't like and I'm not using it anymore. If you want to use a repository server, GitHub is probably the preferred one for many of you. Uh, you can create your own repository for any class that you basically uh, take or any project that you work on. And Bitbucket is something similar. At some point, GitHub didn't support private repositories, so I was using Bitbucket. Uh, both of them also have multi-factor authentication. So in, on GitHub, you basically get a message, a phone message, for instance, with a code and you need to enter it when uh, you log in for, to a repository for the first time. Bitbucket uses uh, basically public private key encryption. I basically load my key for Bitbucket. GitLab probably used it in 220 or other courses. Okay, so let's talk about installation and other issues. So first of all, you need Git. Uh, uh, available as a command line, git bash. And for that, you should download the latest version of git. And it also installs git bash, which is basically a bash, a shell that allows you to run git commands and also Linux commands. Uh, you download basically this, you install it either X or PKG, and now you have git on your machine. The next thing that you should do is to set up your name and uh, uh, and email in your 
basically the global properties. And if you want to see your global properties, you can do it with git config. So the main commands available for git are init, which git init creates a new repository in the location that you are basically creating your folder. Git clone, which clones a remote repository. Git add, that adds the current file that you are working on to the, the repository, the local repository. Git commit, which takes uh, uh, your basically changes to the local file and commits them to the uh, local repository. Git push, which moves the local branch to uh, the remote repository. Git pull, which downloads a branch from the remote repository to the local repository. And basically the idea of Git is that you have the working area, then you have the staging area, which is your local repository, and you have the remote repository where you push your code. And I will show it to you, uh, to you to, uh, through an example. So the typical workflow for any repository control system is that you pull updates, you edit the files, you add your files in the staging area with git add, commit to the local repository and push to the remote server. And for branches, you can make branches, delete branches and push changes. I will show you that too. Git status is a command that will show you the status of a repository, all the changed files, all the untracked files and so on. So to do first is to create your own Git repository. It, uh, GitHub is uh, owned by Microsoft. You can make an account, you can download Git, and we will use Git bash. So try the following things. Basically, in your Git bash, see what is the local directory, list the files to make sure that all the files are there, check also their dates with ls minus l, make a new, new directory for, for homework four and change to that directory. So let me show you this. So I'm starting git bash. I hope that you can see it. So basically I want to see where I am. PWD is the common, uh, uh, basically command to see the working directory, print working directory. That's what PWD stands for. LS is to see what files I have there. And LS minus L is to see also their dates. Let's make a new directory for homework four and change to homework four. And there is nothing else there. Okay, good. So now let's make a direct uh, a repository. So what we will do, we will create a local directory and then we'll push uh, uh, the empty repository into Git. Do not ever touch basically Git. So first thing that we are going to do is Git init. So git init creates a local uh, repository. If you look also for uh, hidden files, you basically can see that there is a hidden file for the git that we just created. So this is my uh, local uh, homework for, which probably it's a future homework. And now, I will create a GitHub repository. So I will go to GitHub, a new repository, let's call it homework four, private repository. I don't want to share my code, add a readme, add a read, ignore, choose a license, let's say Apache, create repository. So I just created a repository. If I want to add additional users, I can basically go to security and basically add additional users uh, in settings, manage access. So basically I can add additional users, but this is my repository for homework four. Okay. Next, once your online repository is created, make sure that you are logging into GitHub, like in Chrome, like I was, 
and then try to connect your local repository to the remote one. So basically, I, ju I just connected my local repository to the remote one. I can basically see if that worked by writing it pull. And now it basically uh, uh, pulls from the remote repository, but there is nothing new that needs to be basically pulled. Git add is basically uh, we want to uh, uh, basically, so pull is to pull from the master and you can pull basically git pull origin master. And we are on the main branch. Now we want to add some files to the repository. So let's actually create some files here. So we are in my local repository. I will create, a, let's say, some file.txt. And let's insert something test here and write and quick. So now git add will add the current file to the repository and git commit minus message my initial file. I basically committed to the local copy uh, my changes. And this is what git commit us basically my first commit don't forget the commands are very useful and now git push origin master which basically what it does it pushes the changes to the remote server everything finished correctly and now if we are going to my homework and update this we can see that some file is there with the test file that I basically created. So our basically updates are on the server. We have made our first commit and we basically uh, committed to the server all our updates. Okay. There are many other commands like merging a repository, reverting to a previous version, uh, and basically I will let you to play with those. I will also send you a tutorial more in depth about uh, Git, uh, but these initial commands, especially that you are now working alone uh, for this project, for basically the project and also the homeworks uh, is uh, enough. You can pull changes, you can add files, commit files, push them to the remote repository. Let's see what questions were and probably I responded by with the demo through this to these changes. So I was researching and people are using git using a command line is much better than using a GUI. I use a GUI most of the time and the reason why is that I it's much faster, okay? So it's not, I'm doing it because uh, it's easier, but it's good to learn direct commands so you don't have, to, and you know what you are doing when you made a change, you know what uh, add, commit, pull, push means. Does Git support versioning of any file? Java, Python, ja JavaScript, HTML, doc. Uh, anything that is text, so Java, Python, JavaScript, uh, HTML, you can see, you can do changes and you can see the changes. Doc is a binary format. So basically you can push a new version, but you cannot change the differences between the two versions. You basically are seeing them in binary. So I personally would say that docs are supported, but you cannot diff them. PDFs too are binary format, so uh, you don't see the differences. Okay, so I think all of the questions are responded. Basically the, uh, 
the rest of the questions I will take offline. Okay, so one thing that I want to do is to save the current version of the recording and then we'll do a recording for the meet and review.